This is the Casking Kodiak 5000. And before I start, I thought I'd let you know that Casking sent me this reel uh, for testing. This is their flagship reel. I thought I'd give it the flagship test. Six months, 60 salt hours with the Casking Kodiak. And uh, let's get started. Now when a man you comps you a reel, the least you can do is give it a real test. So this isn't a simple unboxing, this is a review of all the hours that I've put into this reel. I've casted this reel off of cliffs, off of boats, not one but two, uh, off of a shoreline up and down the California coast, including a shoreline all around the island of Maui, to really get a sense of its capabilities. So 60 uh, salt only hours is what I gave this reel, and uh, I know a lot of you guys can do 60 hours in a month. It took me six months to put in 60 hours because um, this reel is one of a few I have in my arsenal, and I really wanted to, to give it a fair comparison to a lot of the name brand reels uh, that I use uh, on a day-to-day on -day basis. I didn't clean up this reel uh, too much for this review. I didn't want to shine it up. I really wanted to give you guys a sense of uh, how much I actually used it and uh, used it I did. So uh, I really wanted to get a sense of how this would do in the salt and in tough conditions. So this complete review and the eventual teardown of this reel uh, will be um, as new to me as it will be for you guys. So uh, before I get into the actual use of this reel, let's cover um, all the specs out of the box. So as mentioned, this is Casking's flagship reel. Uh, it's saltwater rated. It's our top of the line reel and puts it in the $80 to uh, $90 price point. This is their 5,000 size. Their 5,000 size uh, has a 5.2 to 1 gear ratio. So that's 5.2 turns of the rotor for every one turn of the handle. The body is all alloy construction, all aluminum, with the exception of this uh, front plastic cap here. And uh, it is super stiff. There's absolutely no flex in it uh, You know, when putting a lot of torsional stress on it, casting uh, big lures and casting heavy weights, especially when you're uh, throwing stuff at the bottom. Um, there really is no flex in this reel, which is important. At the $80 to $90 price range, uh, I wouldn't expect uh, any flex, and this reel has none of that. Uh, nice ported design uh, in the rotor, saves some weight. This reel comes in at about 12.8 ounces, so for the 5,000 size, uh, it's pretty good. You know, a battle to 4,000 is about 13.2 ounces. Um, so this Casking 5000 uh, is, is a little lighter than that. Um, it's got a really nice uh, bail mechanism, nice and thick. And all the time I've used it uh, in the 60 hours, uh, I used this reel, half of that was probably uh, plugging in the surf. I not once had a uh, premature bail closure. I not once um, had a premature uh, bail set and I never came close to losing a lure. And I can't say that for some of the reels that I have uh, that are at this price range. And um, it's pretty nice to, to know that um, I'm batting a thousand when it comes to, uh, to casting lures with this reel. Uh, the line roller after 60 hours in the salt uh, spins freely, uh, absolutely no resistance there, and really no uh, wear and corrosion uh, that's visible at least, and um, you know, you really can't feel anything um, in any of the joints and uh, you know, articulating points uh, for the bail mechanism, which is a big plus. Um, nice CNC to very well balanced rotor. Um, huge um, drag cap here. Um, you get a lot of feel, uh, you know, when, when you're searching for the top of this spool and you want to adjust the drag. A nice big drag knob uh, sits on top. And inside this reel has 10 plus 1 ball bearings. Uh, you know, a lot of manufacturers uh, advocate that uh, more ball bearings the better, which in some cases is true. Uh, 10 plus 1 is actually pretty good uh, for this price range, uh, you know, against other competing reels. Uh, so a lot of manufacturers kind of stop at like 8 or 9. Um, Casking went to 10, and they're 10 quality bearings. Again, uh, this reel has uh, minimal maintenance, 60 hours in the salt, and it spins just about as smooth as it did out of the box. Um, I do this thing that I call the pendulum test with reels uh, if in free spool if the uh, handle can go back and forth uh, without any play in its infinite 
reverse, you know, especially after that many hours in the salt, uh, that's a pretty good indication that um, the bearings are nice and tight. Tolerances are really tight and, uh, you know, they were resisted uh, salt uh, intrusion and uh, just a great sign that this reel, uh, you know, will last and go, to the, go the distance in, a, in a harsh conditions. Now it's important to note that the uh, infinite reverse on this reel is uh, super solid 60 hours later this reel does have an anti-reverse switch even the 5000 size so you can back play your fish if you wanted to uh, the handle is anodized and uh, the finish on it is uh, still in really good condition uh, no wear and tear and any signs of uh, salt corrosion and this handle is the screw in type uh, it's my preferred type i think provides a, a stiffer um, body and uh, gear alignment uh, on the inside and uh, this handle is collapsible um, if you're the kind of guy like uh, like me that likes to uh, collapse their handles uh, for storage the handle knob is uh, a rounded eva knob which i really dig um, I know a lot of manufacturers are starting to go this way uh, for their larger spinning reels. Uh, this is the 5000, the Cask and Kodiak uh, stops at 5000 and uh, they were nice enough to put a, a round knob at uh, the 5000 size. This knob is very similar uh, to uh, Pen Clash's uh, 5000 uh, reel size. Uh, the 5000 Pen Clash has a rounded knob very similar to this. Um, and it's uh, very, very, very comfortable. I really dig it. Um, it's got a nice, smooth, uh, organic uh, contour to it, and uh, it's just really comfortable, really light, really uh, not much to it uh, when you're spinning it. You really don't feel um, any of the weight uh, while spinning this reel. Now, one of the competitive advantages that this reel has uh, against a lot of its competitors in its class is its huge drag rating. It's rated at about 39 pounds of drag, uh, which is huge for uh, any 5,000 size reel. And uh, I think the closest uh, competing reels on average are in the 15 to 20 pound range. So 40 pounds of drag, that's a lot of drag. Uh, more drag than I need uh, for you know most of my fishing, uh, for inshore and coastal fishing. Um, but you know, if you're the kind of person that likes to use small reel, small reels against huge fish, um, that's something to consider. Uh, the drag washers are pretty big. The, the drag cap and drag knob is huge. And uh, you know, when you do have a reel with uh, such high drag rating, uh, be aware that you know a couple clicks does add uh, a lot of pressure uh, to the spool. Now, one of the trade-offs for such a high drag rating is reduced line capacity because the washers are so big. It really reduces the amount of uh, real estate that's on this spool for uh, packing on a lot of line. But this reel will give you 200 yards of 30 pound braid, which is uh, more than adequate for most of uh, the fishing I do. Um, to give you a, an idea of scale, a uh, pen battle to 4,000 will give you 185 yards of 30 pound braid, and a Daiwa BG uh, 4,000 will give you uh, 280 yards of 30 pound braid. So, you know, while you might get a reduced line capacity compared to uh, other competing reels, um, just know you have peace of mind uh, with having huge drag pressure to uh, support you and protect you against uh, really hard fighting and big fish. Yeah, those are the specs of the Cask and Kodiak 5000, but as they say, you really can't judge a book by its cover. So let's open it up and see if six months in the Pacific Salt has caused any damage, if any, to this reel. So here we have the Cask and Kodiak 5000 opened up. It took me about 20 minutes to get it to the point that you see here. And uh, first in impressions are pretty good. I don't see any visual indications of rust on any of the uh, internal components. Um, there's some uh, salt um, buildup on some of the exterior components. Um, but we'll get into that, but you know, first impressions are, are pretty darn good. Let's start with the uh, the CNC aluminum spool. Uh, so right away, um, I took out. Uh, well, first off, I took out uh, the drag washers, the drag stack. Uh, the casting's rated at 39.5 uh, pounds of uh, of drag, and uh, for the 5,000 size, and here's why: they have a absolutely huge. Uh, carbon fiber uh, drag washers. Here's a stack here. Pretty clean. Um, the oil used is super light. And notice that the oil used uh, throughout the reel is uh, really light. Um, something to consider uh, in a moment here. But I just wanted to show you this is what the, the drag washer cavity looks like. Um, it looks pretty darn clean. If salt water got into this assembly here, you wouldn't have that uh, carbon fiber weave impression in the oil itself. Now this whole uh, compartment here is protected by the drag knob. The drag knob does have a nice seal around its base and uh, visual inspection of the uh, internals and underside of the drag knob looks pretty darn good. No sand and uh, no salt buildup. And here we have an interesting component. This is the retention bolt for uh, the main shaft 
uh, assembly uh, that includes uh, these two bearings and uh, this bushing right here. Now this bushing creates another watertight seal for the drag washer assembly for this reel. There's another uh, bushing on the underside of this spool and when oiled properly and seated together creates a nice watertight seal for uh, the drag washer compartment. Here we have uh, the dressing on the right side of uh, the spool. It has a little bit of salts on the outside. This piece is plastic, uh, won't really affect it, but I uh, wanted to show you something pretty cool. Um, so even the stainless steel screws uh, that hold um, the you know stuff that makes the reel look pretty um, is stainless steel, number one, so there's very, very, very light corrosion on it. Um, this could probably be easily washed off, but all of the exterior bolts and some of the interior uh, bolts and screws that uh, hold this entire reel uh, together have um, some Loctite or some thread uh, lock on it, which is a pretty cool indication of the attention to detail um, that went into the design and manufacture of this reel. I don't see this in a lot of major manufacturer's reels. Um, I don't think my Pen Battle 2 or uh, my Pen Fierce 2s um, have this kind of treatment to their exterior bolts. Here's the anodized handle of the reel. There's a little bit of corrosion in the folding assembly, but that's 100% my fault. A little vinegar will knock this out. It's just laziness on my part uh, for, for not rinsing out um, this assembly. So if you have uh, this reel or like reels with folding uh, handles, make sure you get in and rinse off your reel uh, every time you use it and expose it to salt. More importantly, the threaded end of this handle that goes into the main gear and actually you know, transfers all the torque that you put into the handle to the main gear, to the rotor, and uh, creates you know the, the whole spinning action of the reel is 100% uh, clean. So that's a great indication of uh, the tolerances, the tight tolerances um, put into the design of uh, where this meets the main gear. And here we have the left uh, side, the drive side side plate with the, uh, the dressing on, on the exterior, a little bit of salt corrosion on the outside. Uh, it's not even corrosion because I think this is all plastic, so it's just salt water buildup. But uh, more importantly, the inside is uh, super clean and uh, free of any corrosion. Um, and, you know, if anything, all I have here is just a little bit of residue from the, you know, super thin oil that uh, Casking uh, uses uh, on their interior gearing assembly. Here's the rotor. Uh, just wanted to show you the underside of it. Um, super clean, uh, no sand, no grit. Um, you know, this reel's dunked, uh, it's been dropped in the sand, it's been splashed, and uh, there's absolutely uh, no visual signs of uh, you know, salt and sand buildup on the underside of the rotor, which is a great indication of um, you know, uh, preventative uh, design to keep salt water and all the elements outside of the, the important stuff. Um, just want to go over the bale. Again, uh, never had a um, miscast or premature bale set and all the hours I put into this reel uh, casting and plugging the surf, which is huge. And uh, just from feel, um, there's no grit uh, whatsoever. Everything's nice and tight and uh, nice and smooth. And here we have an interesting piece. This is the hood or shield that sits on top of the uh, rotor bearings, the, the body bearings. Um, this sits over um, all the bearings that uh, create that smooth action for the reel itself. And it's a great design. It keeps out uh, salt water um, that might find its way um, you know, on top of the spool, underneath the spool, and on top of the rotor. Um, it, protects uh, all of this assembly in here and uh, the anti-reverse switch. Now if you've seen uh, past reviews for reels, um, you know, cheaper reels, uh, you know, specifically Chinese reels that I've uh, purchased on Amazon, um, the anti-reverse bearing switch systems are super vulnerable to salt, so it's cool that uh, Casking uh, put this shield in the entire assembly to help cover this up. And last but not least, here you have the main body with the main shaft, uh, the pinion gears, and the main drive gears. Uh, Casking claims that their center drive shaft, shaft is 15% uh, bigger um, than most uh, competing reels in the market. Uh, that's definitely the case. This is a little bit thicker than uh, the pen reels in this size class uh, that I'm used to. Um, so if it, they say 15%, I'd, uh, I'd say that's an accurate uh, estimation. Um, this is the main drive gear, um, super clean. I mean, there might be you know a tiny bit of uh, corrosion and pitting on the exterior facing um, bit of the main gear, but where it counts, the teeth, uh, super clean. This is 60 hours in the salt, um, 60 hours, um, you know, a lot of that is uh, from the beach and in the sand, and I really don't see any, indica any indication of sand getting in. Um, just everything looks uh, super clean, super tight. 
um, wanted to mention that because they use a super thin oil um, if I ever get to the point where I'm gonna want to rebuild this uh, assembly I'm probably not gonna want to use a thick uh, marine grease uh, like I do for a lot of my other reels specifically my pens I'll probably want to go with a lighter thinner oil like a quantum hot sauce or uh, something to that effect just to stay true to uh, the true uh, you know design intentions for this reel um, this reel is built with a lot of tight tolerances so you definitely want to use uh, you know thin oil if uh, the manufacturer used thin oil to, to make this reel so overall very impressed with the design and the, the condition of all the uh, interior components to the casking Kodiak I've put you know some time into some other reels uh, tearing them apart repairing them fixing them maintaining them and honestly uh, you know for 80 to 90 dollars uh, that's what this reel uh, retails for this reel is on par with a lot of those other reels that are in the hundred dollar range and uh, you know I've opened up reels in the hundred fifty dollar range and uh, you know the quality I see there I see here so you know another indication that this reel definitely gives you a lot of value and uh, I definitely think that if they decide to change the price point of this reel uh, people would pay you know another 20 30 40 maybe even fifty dollars on top of uh, what they're asking uh, for the casking Kodiak so I'm happy to see and a little surprised to see the casking Kodiak uh, has virtually no wear and uh, salt intrusion after six months of being dunked, splashed, you name it. This reel has really seen it all. And uh, to have that level of uh, protection, um, shielded bearings, uh, you know, no seals on the internals, but just a well-designed uh, solid reel uh, to see that there's limited uh, salt exposure uh, to uh, to this reel is is pretty cool. Thumbs up. Uh, you know, my pen battle too. Within the first 20 hours, uh, I did feel some grit. I did feel uh, the gears meshing a little bit, and I had to tear it apart and uh, and uh, rebuild it. This reel, I mean, 60 hours in. I could probably do another 60 and not have to worry about rebuilding it. One thing I will mention though, this reel by uh, other manufacturer standards isn't a true 5000. Uh, it's probably closer to a 3500 or 4000 size reel to give you a visual example. Uh, here's a Daiwa BG 4000. You can see that uh, the line capacity of the spool is a little taller and the reel itself is a little wider. Um, but it's also a lot heavier than uh, the Casking 4000. And uh, here's the reel that I normally plug with. Uh, this is my Pen uh, Clash uh, 4000. And uh, just to give you an, a visual idea of uh, the sizing, this is the Casking's 5000. This is Pen's 4000 sizing standard. And I understand that sizing standards difference, uh, differ from reel to reel. Uh, if anything, uh, the one thing that uh, I wish casking could change was the availability of this reel in larger sizes uh, they have this I believe in a 1,000 to 5,000 maybe a 2,000 to a 5,000 and uh, there's no reason why they can't uh, scale this reel up to uh, you know a 6 or a true 6 or a true 8,000 size reel uh, I like it that much you will see this reel uh, in future videos of mine it probably has a permanent home on my 6.6 .6 Travala. I like it that much and I think it'll be a good match uh, for bottom fishing on the Pacific Coast. And uh, I really appreciate it when a manufacturer understands the time that it takes to make a, a review like this. And uh, hopefully you guys found it informative. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, as always, link in the description below uh, if you are interested in purchasing it. Any purchases made through that link uh, directly support my channel. So again, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys found this video informative and uh, Catch you in the next ones. Tight lines, be safe, and I'll see you next time. You alright? Oh, dude, did you see what I did? Yeah. I jumped over the rail and just grabbed it. Yeah. Dude, Could've something something big came by and just, uh, almost ripped my pole over. <laughs> that was huge, bitch. Oh. The bell went down, huh? Dude, my bell f flew off. He's gone, huh? He's gone.